Today is Saturday, 23 of March, and we are going to dissect this art fight that we found in Roadkill, somewhere close to Polokwane on the gravel road. And thank you so much for coming. Today we have students from University of Limpopo, we have PhD students, volunteers from Polokwane, we have students from uh, Stanford Lake College, from PHS school, and from the schools, uh, schools next to university in Nobody. Thank you. So we are having a job card for this animal, so we already know what kind of projects we are aiming to do on this animal. The name of the projects are written here. Please, during the dissection, maybe come and have a look at this, uh, at this job card, because depending on the animal that we are doing research, we are aiming different kind of questions. And for those questions, we take different samples to, to study them for research. So the job card will stay here. And then I have prepared uh, uh, some, some main information about this animal, the main facts about this animal that is written on this paper. You can have a look, on, a look at it. But the main items that I wanted to mention about this animal is that this animal is art fork. We have it only in sub-Saharan Africa. It's native to Africa and mainly in the sub-Saharan Africa, although it has been transferred to some zoos around the world. I was actually checking the first zoo that got art folk was the zoo in London that got one art folk from South Africa. So it's, a, it's an animal that is possible also to keep it in the zoo. And then uh, the, the art folk, the name art folk has an Afrikaans kind of origin and it means earth work or earth's peak. And the English, in English usually they call it African ant bear, or ant bear, or ant eater. But we shouldn't mix this animal with the uh, ant eater that we have, ant eater that we have in South America. Because in South America we also have ant eater, but that's completely different. They don't even belong to the same order. That's different, they are phylogenetically. So in genetics, this animal has a separate order for itself call it, that is called tubuli dentata. And it's, this is only left animal of that whole order. So there is no other species of that order left currently. We used to have them long time ago, but they all went extinct. So this animal is that special, okay? And uh, the other information that I can mention is nocturnal. It usually lives in the burrows. It eats ants and uh, termites. So that's the reason that we call it Mirmeku Faji, the way of their feeding. It's a special word for that because they eat uh, ants and termites. And uh, I have mentioned some other information that you can check. And the book of the, uh, small ma uh, of the mammals of South Africa is somewhere on the table that you can have a look. So we are going to uh, we are going to divide ourselves to two group. Clean group will be responsible for the samples and putting them in the tubes. And the, there will be a dirty section that the people that will dissect animal will be in that section. Okay, now we are going to start checking the animal for ectoparasites. We check all parts of the body for ectoparasites because sometimes, you know, ectoparasites can go to the funny places. We had a monitor that inside the nostril there were some ticks. So they can be anywhere on the animal. So we will check the animal for ectoparasites. Jonas and Samuel are responsible for the clean section. And in the dirty dissection uh, section, we have Raul, Anuka, and uh, Alfius for now. Okay, thank you so much. And let's check the animal for ectoparasites. Okay, so, so far we have found some, some ticks on this animal. The only ectoparasite that we have found so far were vertex we have found them on different parts of the body we found a few in between the digits interdigital places now Collins found one in the inguinal place that he's gonna separate it and we will preserve them in alcohol 70 percent for further studies so uh, in a brief look most of the ticks that we have found yet are a ripicephalus genus, but of course going to the species and checking all the ticks will take some time. You don't have to look there. That's all. So this will be our clean part, right? So in this one, you are not allowed to touch anything from the body part, right? Blood. Because now here you go. The only thing that you'll be doing is the recording. So you'll we'll be checking it here as well, doing some sample from that side into this side. So basically, that's a pretty, isn't that? Okay, 
now we will start dissecting the animal. It's like all the animals and even human, it's the same procedure. We start from mouse to the anus. So we will start a, a vertical line. We will go all the way to the anus, and then we will start to go to the sides. And we will skin the animal. It's very important when we are skinning under the skin, we be careful because we can have granulomas there, we can have nodules there, we can have tumor there, we can have parasites, worms usually, nematodes. So any structure under the skin that it was strange for you, you must please raise your hand, I will come and check and we will see. Also, as I said, this is the first time I'm also dissecting this animal, there might be something I even don't know. In those cases, we will take samples informally for histopathological examination. So we will just go, uh, Kind of a line. So the first, I guess many of you have seen the Gray's anatomy. So you will just, you must, in the first cut, you must go a little bit stronger to make the cut, and then you will go to the side. This animal might have been bloated a little bit because of the gases, because in this animal, seacombs are very, actually, apparently very strong. I haven't seen it, but I read in, a, in an article that the seacombs of these animals are very strong and apparently big. So if the seacomb is big, there will be a lot of fermentation there and gas. So when you are cutting, you must be very careful because if you cut the intestine, it will may splash on you, okay? So when you are cutting, just keep your uh, try to keep your head back, you know, and don't go too much deep because if you go a little bit yeah. deep, you will go inside the uh, uh, skin sample to do some molecular work for filarial nematodes. There are some nematodes that are usually under the skin and uh, they inject the larvae to the blood vessels. So we're going to take a skin sample. The sample must be long and narrow that fixative can penetrate it. So we will take it and then we will cut the hair, hairs and then we will put it inside ethanol 96 that later on we will do molecular work for uh, for some nematodes that they inject the larvae into the blood so the skin might have the larvae, the microfilarium. Now we are getting inside the animal heart and then we can see the stomach that is quite, it seems there is a bit bloated, it's not completely full but we can see the intestines already and so much hemorrhage is all because of the collision the damage that was done to the animal. Here we can see the anal glands. Anal glands, we find them in many animals, like carnivore animals. Uh, they have some special secretions. And then here is the stomach, and then under there is liver, that we need to cut the chest, cut the sternum to get into, to see the lungs and the liver. Cut the mesenter. Uh, we need to separate the mesenter. Gone. Now we are opening the intestines and piece by piece we are sieving them, looking at whatever is remained on the sieve, looking for parasites. But so far we haven't found any parasite in the small and large intestine. But the cecum was very interesting. And as you can see, the body of the animal is almost checked everywhere. And these are the remainings that will go to the freezer and then a company will fetch them to incinerate them. Then and very interesting was about the stomach contents, that it's about uh, the weight of the stomach contents. How much was it? 945 gram, so almost one kg. And we could recognize a lot of termites, but we haven't checked it carefully, but so far no ants. I didn't see any whole ants, but a lot of vegetables, a kind of vegetation, plants, and a lot of termites. And of course we found about uh, 40, 50 nematodes also, one of them is already here, that Mashia, please, this one also we need to fetch it, this nematode is left behind. And then we also check the lung and the livers, liver and the heart and the spleen, everything was checked. Uh, bladder was very uh, small in comparison with the size of the body, that might be because the animal doesn't eat, uh, drink so much water. In the stomach was very interesting, we had this Pyloric, pyloric part that is mentioned in the literature that is very muscular and is used for smashing the food. Here is the uh, beginning of the intestine. And then we have two type of ulcers in the stomach that we are gonna take histopathology sample to look at them. Then the rest, uh, we didn't have any nematode attached. And these are the nematodes that we found them in the stomach that uh, 
because the animal was frozen for a while they are a little bit dark and we need to clear them and find out what nematodes species they are